have to wonder why quinine is banned in the United States and they do have something that they sell called Chinchona Bark. I think it's international and it does have a studied effect that is near identical to quinine which I guess is more pharmaceutical. So doing research on the both of them led me to a paper on preventing malaria that shows the history of how this bark was found initially it was believe it or not initially called uh, Jesuits bark because the Jesuits had come as missionaries into the area where this bark was found and then from that point it began to become a pharmaceutical over time as they discovered something about it that they wanted to keep we have now a ban on it so we have a Jesuit run world right now a Jesuit elite and it's just really interesting to maybe to know a little bit more. So I wanted to share just something I found. Just part of the story is about a manufactured disease. Possibly, I'm not saying it's true, but there was something called the Malaria Commission in 1925 and the League of Nations, which has become the UN. It was first the League of Nations. So they reported about this commission that there was an effort to control malaria through propagandizing the, um, the people of various countries to get them. It was called anti-malaria campaigns and they said it was needed to give everyone this quinine in order to prevent malaria. And they were saying how there are disciplined populations such as mine workers and rice workers, people that were armed forces in the railways, similar to what we're seeing now as what kind of jobs are expendable and what kind of jobs are necessary. These were targeted to this campaign. Everyone was targeted by this campaign, but they were trying to get everyone to take, to self-dose. It's interesting now because they wanted to get everyone to take it, but now they don't want anyone to take it. <laughs> so maybe they discovered something through trying to do this experiment, which was an experiment, but it says they mass medicated with synthetic anti-malarial. So they took, they had found the bark years before, I don't know, it was the 1800s. And by the 1930s, it became a medication that was controlled. And so this was now pushed because supposedly malaria was a problem. And there were all these cases of malaria. Well, how was malaria determined then? And was this one of the things that they even did then? Were they, are, were they doing manufacturing um, these kind of plagues then? I have no idea. I'm just saying it's an interesting pattern. So they're talking about this in the way of experiments. So they had control groups. So they had areas that they did not treat or push this propaganda, and they had areas that they did. They said it was hard to control because of various things and you know they've learned a lot since then obviously so they concluded that they would want to suggest make suggestions to the public for treatment and prevention of malaria it says they desired to get examination of the blood and it said and that mass treatment with quinine should be accompanied or followed by uh, plasmoquine so we have quinine and plasmoquine, and now we have hydroxychloroquine, which has this quin in it. So I don't, again, I don't know this chemistry, but it's just interesting. It says to reduce the risk of relapses. It says without disciplined communities, under strict supervision, mass drug prophylaxis was highly unlikely to be successful. So something we know in this time is that they're just experimenting. They're trying something, but they don't know what people are going to do. And this just reminds you that you do have power in these situations. You're not being preyed upon without any power. You do have decision. You, you do have resistance. You do have the ability to pray. You do have the power of Christ. And whatever mass drug push that's coming through propaganda, you do have a say. And so don't ever forget that. It says, with regard to the choice among several anti-malarial drugs then available, uh, the commission ranked quinine first because of its clinical effectiveness and absence of serious toxicity. 
but also people knew about its use and dosage because of the propaganda. But what happened was that there were actually these other drugs, I guess, I think they were still laboratory made, but Artemether and Art Nusset, I don't know how to say that, were stronger, were shown to be stronger in use. And I think to this day, they still give it in certain cases. In sometimes dramatic results of treatment, the intermittent fevers with this chinchona bark is, or cinchona bark is what, like I said, in the early, the 1800s were used because that's the natural version. And then the quinine, which is the active principle in that bark, was isolated and it became more palatable because it was confidently dosed. You know, it's just bringing the science, bringing the laboratories to something that's already working and to people that already know how to use it. And then they start to market it and push it. So it says the difference between quinine and the bark were not dramatic. And so they said, well, if it's not dramatic differences, we're just going to have to go and bring this into more studies to find out in more detail if they are different or how they're different. So just controlling something that was already working and just trying to find out more information, just like I always mention experimental psychology, it's they just get so deep into analyzing things so that the more they know about it, the more they can control. And that's a counterfeit to God. God knows everything, but he doesn't control They try to know as much as they can so that they can control. So that's all for today. That's just a little food for thought as I was catching up on some reading here. And maybe it'll help you in some investigation and just understanding about the history of propaganda and especially where it comes to health and medicine. Uh, Take great care and be blessed in Jesus' name. Bye for now.